Welcome back to Urban Traditionalists. It's a bit of a gross day outside weather-wise, so I thought I would do an inside video today and walk you through my preserve pantry. <clears throat> now, a lot of people ask me, you know, when I tell them that I've preserved something, they're like, oh, it's so amazing that you do that. What do you make with it? And I find that a funny question sometimes because it really is just food. And so when you're going through the grocery store and you buy a bag of potatoes, you know how to cook it, right? So these are just potatoes. But somehow when you show someone this, the idea of how to cook potatoes suddenly goes straight out of their head. And I get it because it looks a little funny and it's a little odd and people wonder if it's safe. But it's uh, it really is, it's just food. It's just potatoes. So cook it the same. In light of that question, I thought I would go through my preserve pantry with you, tell you what I've preserved, why I preserve it, and some of the ways I use it. <clears throat> On the bottom shelf here, we have mainly jams. It's jams straight up till here. We have a peach salsa here, jalapenos, and fireweed jelly, which is the first time I've done that. I'm pretty excited. And then pears to end it off. This shelf here, we have pressure canned squash right up till here, potatoes, we have a rose hip sauce, which again, that's new to me this year, I'm kind of excited about it, canned cherries, peaches, and then apples right at the end. <clears throat> this shelf, we have salsa, and then I've got my relish right here, carrots, pickles, these are two sauces that we did a while ago, but they didn't really turn out quite how we thought, so they've been here a while, and we really should use them. Um, and then we've got the classic tomatoes, this shelf is actually meat, which really might gross some people out. We can talk about that later. Uh, yes, it is perfectly safe. Yes, it looks like a science experiment. Uh, there you go. So here we have chicken. This is a sausage. I've got ham. And then I have venison right at the end here. Uh, this is ground venison. And really, it's the same as ground beef when you're talking meat. Uh, top shelf, which you can barely see, this is actually this year's salsa. So... This is last year's salsa. We're still finishing it up. This is this year's. And then this is this year's potatoes all the way up here. Yes, we do a lot of them. <clears throat> and these are last year's potatoes. So we'll use these first and only a couple left. And then we'll rotate them out. This video might get a little long. Um, I will clearly indicate what shelf I'm talking about. So if there's a certain shelf that you want to be aware of, I, I'll try to be very clear on where I'm at so you can kind of move about the video and hear what you want to hear. <clears throat> Obviously jams are very popular when it comes to canning. That's sort of the main thing that you see people doing because it is very easy and fruit is very accessible in a lot of regions. So I have a Saskatoon berry jam here. Saskatoons are actually um, a, uh, well, the word has completely gone out of my head. You can find them wild, you can forage, you can forage them here. So <clears throat> I forged them uh, last year and made a bunch of jam out of it. It turned out, it's pretty thick. Um, my husband's not a great fan of the texture. I, I do like it, but we have used this in a charcuterie and then of course toast and stuff. We also did a jalapeno cherry jam, which is really great with charcuterie and a regular cherry jam as well. We have strawberry jam, a mixed berry jam. This was actually done with frozen fruit that had just, we'd accumulated over the years, like most people do, I guess, thinking you're going to make smoothies out of it and then you never do. So I actually took all of that fruit, mixed it with some fresh cherries, and then made a mixed berry jam. This is the peach marmalade. This is our favorite. Uh, you make it just like a regular marmalade, but it's got peaches in it. Or you make it just like peach jam, except it has oranges in it and lemons, and it's super, super good. So peach marmalade, this is our number one favorite. <clears throat> peach salsa. Oh my goodness, this was my uh, a friend's recipe, and I... <laughs> I felt, I felt so greedy. Anytime she would pull it out, I would literally eat like half of these jars myself. And the only reason I stopped at half was because I was like, oh my gosh, you're being so gluttonous and this is not your home and you should stop eating that. Um, I literally could down one of these in a sitting. The peach salsa I have had just with obviously chips, crackers, charcuterie. I've actually, yes, I have put it on hot dogs and it's really amazing. Um, this is also peach salsa. These are just pickled jalapenos. They're super, super spicy. Um, <clears throat> way spicier than like your standard store pickled jalapenos. So 
I did a lot of these jars. I think I have nine of them. I feel like I have them for life because I have one in the fridge and I've just barely knocked into it. And honestly, I'm probably gonna have these for years. The fireweed jelly. Again, you can harvest fireweed flowers around here and I will do a video on that when the fireweed is back in season. So I'll film us going to harvest it and talk about it and then film the process of making it. I didn't do that with this batch because this was my first time making it and we just barely hit the end of fireweed season. So it was kind of a last minute experiment and I, I just didn't feel like it was good enough to film. So when the fireweed jelly is back in season, which is in August, that's when I'll post that video. Pears, pretty straightforward. Um, squash. This is where the questions might come in. Here we are. We're at shelf two. Squash right here. Um, this is actually mixed squash. So this is a combination of like kabocha squash, butternut squash, acorn squash. Um, what other winter squashes are out there? Uh, can someone tell me the name of this one actually? There's one, it might actually just be called blue pumpkin, but it looks like a blue pumpkin, but it's like kind of short and stocky and wide and it's so pretty. It's like robin's egg blue, but when you cut it open, it's like the color of this and it's so tasty. Um, <clears throat> so these jars are just a mixed breed of squash. Now here's where I might get the questions of like, what the heck do you cook with that? I love mashed squash, like you would make mashed potatoes, um, even with garlic, butter, onions, whatever, like it's so, so good. The other thing I made with this recently is I actually did a pasta sauce out of it. So I cooked up some chicken and onions, garlic, mushrooms, um, and then I poured one of these jars. You want to drain the water out, so once the water's drained out, I poured all the contents of the squash straight into the pan and mix it all up and then I added a jar of uh, tomato paste to it and then spiced it as as you will and then I added it to a penne pasta and then baked it with cheese and it was so good so you can make pasta sauce out of squash um, you can also fry them up in a pan you can pan fry them or you could actually just roast them in the oven this is fully cooked when you are pressure canning something or even water bath canning something it will be fully done like I could open this up grab a spoon and just eat it straight out of the jar. It's cooked. <clears throat> so when you're frying it, you're not frying it to cook it through. You're frying it to heat it up and give it that texture that you want or same with roasting. So cuts your cooking time way down when you pressure can ahead of time. Same kind of idea with the potatoes. We have uh, done potato salad out of this. So you literally just dump this into a strainer, rinse it off and then put it into a bowl and mix it up in your potato salad. Again, these are fully cooked. They're ready to go. The other thing we've done with these is we have boiled them for 10 to 15 minutes just to heat them up, heat them through, and then made mashed potatoes, like amazing mashed potatoes. We've also fried them for hash browns, uh, which is also amazing. We're big breakfast people uh, on the weekends, so your hash browns are ready to go. Just fry them up and sear them however you want. And uh, I feel like there's one other thing that I did with these. Oh, we made potato bacon soup the other day. It was unreal. So we just dumped this in and uh, with some cream, bacon, onions, and oh, I want it right now already. Uh, so we did soup out of that too. I also do squash soup, so you can turn these into soup as well. You can cream it up. You don't pressure can with any type of cream uh, or dairy ingredient in the jar. You have to add that afterwards, which is why it's good to can stuff in like their most basic form. So you can turn it into whatever you want after the fact. <clears throat> the rose hip sauce. I'm not really sure I made it properly. It's pretty watery. I probably should have reduced it down a bit more, but rose hip sauce is actually meant to be quite like ketchup. And rose hips, again, are harvestable in our area, but only in the months of like September to, I think I even got this beginning of November, just where we are. Uh, but it's meant to be kind of like a ketchup hot sauce. And it, it is, I like it. It was, turned out pretty good. It is my first go of it. I'm assuming I'll get better. Um, but that's really just a condiment. So however you want to eat that. Uh, canned cherries. These are actually from 2019. Um, I, I like canned cherries, but I, I honestly couldn't tell you how I want to use them. I think when I did this, I planned on doing like black forest cake and baking with them, like putting them in baking. And I just, I don't know. I just never got around to it. However, pro tip, any type of fruit that you can, this juice, uh, don't dump it. A lot of people dump it, keep it. And yes, this will go bad sooner in a fridge. So you do have to consume it when you open it, you know, within two weeks kind of idea before it'll start to mold because it is an organic ingredient and there's not fake preserves in here, right? So it will go bad sooner. 
but keep the juice. It's essentially just fruit juice, right? So if you have kids and they like juice, like you got it right here. Not a ton of it, but you have it. One thing I like to do with the juice actually is we um, keep carbonated water in our fridge and I'll pour a little bit of juice into the carbonated water and it sweetens it up so nicely. And then you've got different flavors, you know, as you open fruit. <clears throat> My uncle loves cherries, canned cherries. He just eats them out of the jar like olives or he'll put them on ice cream. So this is more of like a sweet kind of dessert thing. Um, I did dehydrate a bunch of cherries as well, actually. So if I bake, I will probably more than likely chop those up and then put them in muffins or granola or whatever. But um, I did this because I actually got all these cherries for free uh, that, that year that I canned them. And then it just seemed like a nice idea. Canned peaches are my... <laughs> my cornerstone of canning they're what my grandma did and what i loved and kind of what got me into canning in the first place peaches on ice cream on whatever who cares in a bowl like just drink the juice straight out of the jar apples this one i will talk about a bit so most people when they can apples they can applesauce um and that's just their go-to is applesauce this jar is kind of sticky actually hmm, should clean that um and I don't like canning applesauce. And the only reason I don't like that is because it doesn't keep the fruit in a very diverse form. All you have is applesauce, which limits you on how you can eat it really. So now it's either in a bowl or it's on your ham, if you're having a ham dinner, or it's on ice cream. I don't know, is that it? How else do you eat applesauce? Uh, I know you can bake with it. It can be a baking substitute for some things. I like canning my apples in uh, cubes. So you can see they're all kind of cubed in there. And the reason I like doing it like this is because this is literally like a pie filling ready to go. Uh, or, you know, you can put in any type of baking and muffins or, right, whatever. You're not going to make a pie with applesauce. If I want to turn this into applesauce, I will put an inversion blender into the jar and blend it straight up and now I have applesauce. So, you know, preserving them in cubes leaves them versatile and gives you more options when you're cooking. And then if you want applesauce, just blend it. Now you have applesauce. Moving up our shelves. We are now here at our salsa and relish shelf. Here we go. Uh, salsa, do we really need to explain that? Probably not, everyone knows how to eat salsa. Uh, relish. <laughs> yes, we all know how to eat relish. Hamburgers, hot dogs, whatever. But when you make your own relish, it just is so thick and beautiful. Like, look at that. Look how thick and gorgeous that is, right? Um, and you can put a lot more in it. So, you know, there's onions and um, obviously lots of fresh dill and peppers. I put peppers in this. This one actually has jalapenos. And you'll notice the coloring is just a little bit different because of the different ingredients. Um, and... I make a lot of relish now because it turns out that we love it on multiple things. So it's not just a hamburger condiment or um, a hot dog condiment. I'll actually put this on the majority of sandwiches I make now. So tuna sandwiches or whatever, any type of meat that you put on a sandwich, like I'll put this on it. We've also put this on like charcuterie boards or if we're just having like a cheese and cracker snack, we'll bring this out and put that on the cheese and crackers. Like it's so delicious. It's so like just dense in its flavoring. There's a lot going on in this jar. And uh, the first year I made it, we went through a lot just because we're big hamburger people. But then I found we were going through one of these bigger jars a month. And it was just because, you know, I was putting on it everything, including sandwiches. And then this year I made a bit of a spicier version with the jalapeno, which is quite nice. Carrots. Uh, again, carrots, pretty obvious. They're carrots. But I just love eating these straight out of the jar from the fridge. They're pickled carrots. They make a great snack. And if you're like a mom that doesn't really know what to put in lunch kits or what have you, like pickled carrots is a great idea if your kids will eat them. You don't have to make them super garlicky. You could make them sweeter even. Um, and again, charcuterie boards, all that type stuff. We'll kind of skip past the pickles. Again, these sauces were, I don't know, we need to eat them. We need to improve them. Uh, and, and then tomatoes and again tomato self-explanatory right you're going to just turn it into any type of tomato sauce uh, whether it be spaghetti sauce or pizza sauce or whatever turn it into soup right that's why it's good to can in basic form because then you can turn it into whatever you want meat here we are the meat shelf uh again people get a little weirded out when you say you can meat and for the people who aren't squeamish we'll show you the science experiment up close 
that is half a chicken in there. And yes, it's fully cooked. And yes, it's safe to eat. And yes, it's sealed properly. Um, <clears throat> essentially, when you pressure can, the meat will cook in its own juice. So we added a little bit of water to this and then the meat secreted water. And uh, so that's like, this is like full on amazing chicken broth in here, right? This is like chicken bullion to the nth degree. And uh, we haven't really found the chicken to be a main stable for us when pulling stuff off this shelf. I would say we more resort to like the ground beef. Again, this is venison, but same idea. Uh, this has been a lifesaver for a ton of dinners. It's literally just ground meat in there and you can see the fat has come to the top and solidified, totally normal. Uh, we have pulled this out, fried it up in taco seasoning, dumped it on tacos, put it in a spaghetti sauce. I've made shepherd's pie out of it. Um, whatever, right? You know, people look at this and again, they're like, oh shoot, what do you make with that? And if you're the type of person that buys ground beef on a regular basis in the grocery store, you're making the same stuff, only this is fully cooked and all you have to do is heat it up and season it and you're ready to go. So for those of you that struggle with like what to do with dinner because you just never have time, um, but invest the time in having your own pantry because you can pull off potatoes and meat off the shelf, heat it up, make a quick shepherd's pie and dinner's gonna be ready in half the time, right? Or make a squash soup or mashed squash to go with your chicken, right? These are quick, easy dinners or lunches or whatever that um, really eliminate a lot of working, a working time in the kitchen. So the reason I do this is because I, I love being in control of what we eat for one. When you consider the type of relish you buy in the grocery store versus this, there's just no comparison. Same with the jams, you know, I can control the sugar content as to how sweet it is or how much sugar we're consuming uh, when we eat toast and what have you or breakfast. And I control the flavor, right? Like, tell me where else you can find a peach salsa. Maybe everywhere I can't, but, or uh, a peach marmalade, right? So this really creates good diverse flavor in our life and it also eliminates a lot of prep time and cooking time. Um, the other thing that we really utilize our pantry for is when we go camping. So if you're not reliant on a cooler for some of your produce or even some of your meat, no, you can't leave that in the sun. But if your cooler does lose some ice or lose some, you know, cool stability, this will be fine in warmer temperatures. We're talking like 10 degrees, right? That's still okay. So we'll actually put some of this stuff in our trailer. And then that way, you know, we only have a tiny little fridge in our trailer. So some of this stuff can just sit on the shelf. So this is really, really great accessible food for camping if you're that type of person as well. Um, I really blazed through that super quick and uh, maybe we'll do another one except we'll talk about dehydration and we can kind of walk you through some of the dehydrated foods I do, why I do them. Again, similar idea and it just makes it super accessible for when we're ready to cook and eliminates a lot of work. All right, hope you learned something. Tell me if you can some of this or if some of this was new to you and what's in your pantry in the comments. And just, you know, help us out with the channel. Like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Helps us with the algorithms, gets us out there. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.